peeps it's great why making it happen again today with some more portal lights hope you guys are having a fantastic day i'm having a great day myself and today we're going to be discussing or looking at how to turn a long pulse a long or a constant signal into a pulse signal or a one short signal we're going to kind of explore that together and uh shout out to james chapman he commented in the last video telling telling about how he found a uh, way to make a short pulse um, using a NOR gate and a delay and I kind of misunderstood what he was saying um, he is right he did accomplish the, uh, the the thing he's talking about I thought he was talking about getting a, a constant signal and getting one pulse out of it and then it stops he's talking about taking a constant signal and changing it so it goes on off on off on off on off he, he actually attempted this or, or did this by using um, a lever into a NOR gate the NOR gate goes into a delay and then the delay goes back into a nor gate also i'm very sorry if this this video is noisy somebody decided to start mowing their lawn outside at my house or my apartment and also there apparently there's a biker gang driving by because there's so many motorcycles driving past my apartment right now so very sorry about the noise but the uh this lever goes into this goes in this back into it and it creates this pulsing thing i see what you're doing now i understand james chapman so it does work sure turning that into a pulse that is possible um what we do know already is that we have these delays right and we can have these delays just kind of chill out and do their own thing and they will pulse also they'll just pulse by themselves without anything going into them so if you want to save yourself a connection here, you could instead do the same thing into an AND gate, but leave the delay empty. Leave the delay, not nothing going into it, but have that go into the AND gate as well. So the lever and the AND gate, or the AND, and the delay go into the AND gate. And then if we do that, it'll only work when it's on. And then we would turn it off, it won't work. So that's a way you can save yourself a connection if you don't want to have to feed this into this into this. Save yourself, because if you're doing a lot of these, those connections take a while. They can get kind of a, to be kind of a pain in the butt. So that's an easy way that you can turn a delay into just a constant pulsing. A couple of good methods there. And then what I would like to show you guys really quick is um, th there is this annoying thing where, say you have your timer, for example, and when you turn it on, let's say... Actually, you know what? No, let's not do a timer. Oops. Let's do a lever again. Let's grab another lever. Let's just go with a plain old white lever. And let's move it back here. Now, what I want to do is I want to say when we turn this on, you guys know, it just turns on. It's just on. And that's cool, but what if when you turn something on, you just want to send a one pulse? Like, you don't want it to be constantly on. And a reason this might be an issue is because... Say we have we do have a timer, for example, and we have that timer turned on by this lever, right? And then when we, oh hello, oh because it's on right now, and let's have a lever over here to turn it off. There we go. So now if we leave it on though, there's this annoying thing where as soon as we turn it off. It's going to keep turning back on. So this constant pulse isn't really giving us what we want. It's kind of uh, it's kind of annoying. So what we can do to fix this is we can add a second timer. If we want to get a single pulse out of this, this constant signal, what we can do is we can say, when this lever is turned on, turn this on. And then we can put an AND gate. Let's grab an AND gate really quick here. We'll put an AND gate on top of this. And this AND gate is going to turn on this timer. And we're going to add one more condition. Let's put a condition here that says um, that this timer is not on. So we're going to lead this NOT gate into the delay, or into the AND gate. And we're going to lead this lever into it. And we're going to get the connection from these and put them into turning this on. And then we'll have the same lever turn it off. So, what we can do now is we can have a delay right here, have this 
lead into the delay and then have the delay lead back into it. So actually, you know, I'm sorry. We're not going to use the same lever to turn it off. We're going to have this. We're going to have it turn itself off with a delay. So let's do a 0.5 second here. And let's do another torch on here. And so we can see if this timer is on or not. So now let's turn this off real quick. Oh, duh. So now what should happen is if we hit this button, this should turn on and then turn itself off. And this one should stay on. Sure enough. So by doing that, by adding a second timer and basing its conditions on this other timer, when we initially turn this on for the very first time, when this signal is sent right away, right away, neither of these are on. So this AND gate is going to look and see that this timer is not on, which means this NOT gate will be on. So it's going to see that this, this condition is met, this NOT gate is true. And then for just a split second, when this is toggle is turned on, or whatever signal you send into it, is turned on it's gonna recognize that this one's not on and it's gonna turn these on and as soon as they both get turned on this condition will no longer be true this will actually be on so this AND gate won't work anymore because this NOT gate is no longer gonna be sending a signal and because of that when this turns on and sends a signal to this delay that sends it back and it turns itself off the AND gate that's turning it on these conditions are no longer true so even though this this signal is still constant we still only get a one pulse signal out of it. And we can make that pulse as long as we want. We can make it a super short pulse. We can make it 0.1 seconds. We can make it two seconds. We can make it as long as we want. We can base it entirely off of the delay and it doesn't matter how long you want to make it. It's still going to work properly because that condition is changed as soon as we initiate the signal. So it's a really easy way if you guys are, are really stuck with, when, well, I want to turn this on, but I want to be able to turn it off. But the thing that's turning it on is still turning it on. Like, say we have a timer that, that stands for, the like, your game has been started or your dungeon has been started. And as soon as this starts, you want to start this timer over here. And the problem is that when you start this timer over here, as soon as you're done and you want to turn this timer off, it keeps getting turned back on. Well, you can fix that by doing something like this so that this timer is dependent on a different timer that gets initiated by this and is is started with assuming that other timer is off. So just by adding a second condition, you guys can make this a short pulse. It's a really easy way to do it. Um, I thought it's pretty. I thought it was pretty useful. So if you guys, uh, if you like this, make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave me any questions. If you have any questions about this, if this doesn't make sense, if you want something clarified, definitely get to me in the comments section. But if you guys can think of other things you want to see built, other things you want tutorials on, I know a lot of people have suggested they want to hear about music blocks. I've already started to work on music blocks a little bit. I created this little, like, um, note machine thing. Oh, is it not going to work? There we go. Ah, it's still a work in progress, guys. But that's going to be it for me today. Thanks so much for hanging out. You've been a pleasure as always. And I hope you do have just the best kind of day. See you later, dudes.